wars in Iraq, it, terrorism, it doesn't mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books on that. Who's looking at the fella whose skulls fell off? What? We we'll see. It's interesting, isn't it? What do you mean the fella whose skulls fell off? Well, that's what happened the other week, so I wrote about what? it. What? A fella's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has fell off? It's something to do with circulation. But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? Well, it's in the diary. We but how can a skull fall off? Because it's surrounded by tissue and it's got a brain. How can just his skull, how can it, how can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding you know, it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but all I'm saying is, that's, <laughs> that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. Good point, Steve. I don't all know Alright, well let me just, I'll just, on. I'll just consult the diary quickly and find the, uh, the moment with the man whose skull fell off. Oh, here we are, yeah. Looks like the world's fattest man is having an operation to get rid of some of the fat. Yeah. He has to have an iron bed because that's the only thing that can hold his weight. Yeah. There's also a man whose skull has fell out. He's in hospital somewhere. I hate that. It would make me panic. The hospital is busy with people coming in to look at their head. What are you talking about there? That tells us nothing. Right, it's impossible for a skull to fall out. It How are scholars in 10,000 years going to be- what are they going to decipher from that? They can sort of go. There's not enough incident but, 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 detail. But, but, but how did his skull fall out? Circulation problems. But th answer the question. How did his skull fall out? Fall out of what? He was at home, um, and I don't know if he was combing his hair or something, but it, it come off. What <laughs> did? His skull. What do you mean, his skull? Do you know what the skull is? It's a part of the head. Well, it, no, it's the, it's the structure of the head. It's the bone. Do you mean the top of the skull? This is only useful if you have all the salient facts. Then it would be of interest to us. We could, we could. Well, that, I, that, I couldn't take that on. I'm busy. I'm not going to start looking into stuff in depth. Just get the <laughs> details. Oh, God, <laughs> you're such an idiot. You are the best, oh, idiot in the world. Well, I don't want to be premature, but that entry is followed by, I injured my toe the other day by dropping the toaster. Instead of letting it hit the floor, I tried to catch it with my foot. Fortune faded. Red hot chili peppers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Back for two hours a day, then a Monday half. Carning the management, baby, and sending this station spiralling down into the depths for his greed <laughs> and selfishness. Yes. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to sort of have spirits out because we've been at it in the office and we've got to be- Okay, um, okay, I'm just gonna say it. Um, I think Shed 7 have split up. Sorry, I didn't- Shed 7 have split up. Uh, um, <coughs> I- sorry, I- I think I got something in my eye. <laughs> um, uh, it's just a bit dusty, you know, I think. So, okay, if it's true, it's true. If not, we got their, at least we got their music. Their music, the music, the music lives on. So we're going to dedicate this show to Head Seven and all the bands they influence. Influence. So we're just going to play just every 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 artist that that formed a band after they'd heard Shed Seven. Just play them from now on, and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed Seven hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website. It said about, "Is it true? Shed Seven split up." And the next, you know, one of those dor dorky message boards, someone came up and said, "You are joking." <laughs> 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 oh. oh dear, what else is that? I just way? pray that uh, uh, it is just a rumor. If it is just a rumor. Yeah, then uh, get in touch. Just, just to call in if it's true. Um, well, no, call in, call in yourself. It, it, well, Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now, yeah. uh, call in and say, what, what was the split all about? Landed, Mr. Ben Folds. We've landed on XFM 104.9. Look at today, Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington and his magical little manky round baldy head. He was described as, um, wacky mank. In that one of the papers this week. Really? Brilliant. Well, remember we were talking about it last week about he came round to my house and um, I popped out my uh, um, Mr. Johnson. Sure. To take a little look at. And he's two. That made daughters. the papers. That right. made the papers. Wow. What what paper? It wasn't it wasn't front page of the Times. It must have been like the Daily Star <laughs> or something. 
<laughs> just squeeze live eight in yeah, the second, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the second page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Wacky Mank. Wacky Mank. That's Wacky great. Mank. Wacky Mank. We had an email from someone that reckons they remember you from, uh, Body Popping, uh, round Salford Way. Yeah, Eccles Precinct, apparently. You know that thing? I wasn't doing it round there, though. What, what do you mean? I was round Stratford. Stratford Arndale. And what were you doing? What sort of body popping was it? Just a bit of everything. Caterpillar. <laughs> Uh, bit of moonwalking. Do you have a little piece of line that you used to carry around? Well, mates had that. Right, you did Borrowed theirs. Borrowed theirs. Were you any good? Uh, but you weren't break dancing, were you? You weren't spinning on your head and stuff. You were more body popping. Well, I hope you weren't spinning on his head because you know that can sort of do, you can give you little brain damage and things. Well, it can give you brain damage. Also, it can wear your, um, head down and also it makes your head perfectly round. Yeah. Because gravity is pulling on But all. if you keep on doing it, obviously it's going to wear your hair. Hair out, yeah. So you, so you become a, a sort of like a. Stupid. Uh, stupid, bald. And roundy yeah. headed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, very I very good. much doubt that you did do any of that. Mm. Did you, Carl? Didn't do any of that. Uh, well. So you're shooting off in a minute, aren't you? Well, yes, because we were trying to make poverty history, Carl. Yeah. People are good. making poverty history all over the place. They're putting on a wristband. Oh, and it seems to be working. Because I haven't been poor for ages. <laughs> no, I haven't been poor. And, the, and Alex had a, um, a stop bullying. Alex was wearing a stop bullying uh, wristband, and as he himself said, he, he, he seems to have sorted that out. You haven't been bullied for ages. I haven't been bullied for years. So wristbands, wristbands work. I so saw one um, in a shop window the other day, which said, um, stop child abuse. And I bought one, obviously, because, um, a lot of people say, you know, does it make a difference, but it was only a quid, and I'd only spent it on kiddie porn. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I think I'd make a little difference there, in a small way. On a serious note, though, I like the idea that, that, I'm child of you, you're a paedophile, and you're walking along the street in your Mac, right, you've got a puppy in one hand, a bag of sweets in the other, and you see this wristband, and you go, oh, stop it. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I hadn't right. thought before, that's what right, I think. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I, won't, I won't be doing that again. Yeah, he was hanging around in Top Shop <laughs> for unsavoury reasons. <laughs> you saw them in there for only a quid. A retro cut there, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Don't believe a word. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Bubba doo boo, <laughs> who's that over there? <laughs> it's Carly Pilk Boys. <laughs> You right, oh, Carl? Oh, that's clever. How you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah? Come on, up, 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 bigger bagadoo. Up, 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 yeah? Project, project. There's people out there wanting to, you know, cheer up their Saturday afternoon. We're the boys for it, yeah? yeah. We're like quick, quick fitters. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Alright, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Come on! Come I'm on! Right, I'm alright, I'm up for it. That's it, this is the height of excitement. <laughs> this is it, is it? That's this how is you, you when you're high This is you quiet. off your head, is it? High on life. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> what did Suzanne say about you saying about a big ass? Uh, Go on. Since you heard about it. Should we recap yeah. what happened last week? Well, the week before, he, he uh, said that um, her haircut looked like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> she didn't like that. So, next week I said, she was a bit grumpy, went, yeah, I didn't mention her fat ass. <laughs> Still thinking that she she would never hear about this. Yeah. What happened when you went home? Um, she heard about that off a mate. Yeah. And we sorted it out. Didn't have to buy her anything. I just, just sort of said, come on, you know what the show's about and that. Stop yeah. moaning. Yeah. Right. That was all right until about Thursday, when I was reading about, uh, do you know, like they say, there's, there's, like, two worlds and that, and, uh, whatever I'm doing now here, there's another one of me doing the same. Yeah. But, well, no, but, he's probably taking some time off. <laughs> he's probably having a week off. Yeah. But, Go on. but I was just talking about that, and she was saying, nah, that, that doesn't happen. And I sort of said, well, they definitely won't have a haircut like yours. <laughs> Right, that, that sort of started the, yeah. the argument again. It's almost like you haven't learnt your lesson. Also, it's like you're talking about it again on air, almost <laughs> in a way, <laughs> so our mates could hear again. It's well, very short. short again, though, short you know, again. you know, Carl. If there was a, uh, if I cut a hole in a in a box and you knew there was an orange in there, right, and you put your hand in, would you be stuck there trying to get that orange out? Do you think, or would you just like let it go and sort of tip it upside down to get it out? What do you mean? <laughs> I think that answers your question. <laughs> is that a cardboard box on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any other things you want to criticise Suzanne for while we're on air? Anything else? Anything that's been niggling that you feel you should get off your chest? Uh, the hair, the arse. Nah, leave no, it. Everything leave else it. is yeah, fine. Leave it. leave it. I think so. Okay. Uh, that's good. I good. think leave it. Well good. done. Now, can we just check what uh, other big Carl features have we got today? We got uh, Monkey News. Got Monkey News That's coming on, yeah. yeah. Got a bit of, uh, got Rockbusters. Uh -huh. And, uh, the film thing. 
that, uh, <laughs> Still not got a name. <laughs> yeah. The film thing. Just, just me and a film and that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh... Brilliant. This week, we're digging out the old, uh, the one, when I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right, so you're gonna make Jack an appearance. Jack Nicholson. Brilliant film. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant film. It was my favourite film until I saw Godfather. It's better than that. Well, you know, yeah, some would say that, yeah. No, it is. The, the storyline's more interesting than I that. I didn't know it? there was an actual answer. I didn't- <laughs> so, Sorry, it's what's best? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Is it? Nest. Okay. Oh, fact, Rick. oh, right. Okay. Where's- Where's Godfather? Because I want to know, because I don't embarrass myself. Or uh, is it my fourth favourite film or something, or? Probably about <laughs> fifth. In my fifth favourite film, is it? Brilliant. Talking of lists. I suppose Rick. I like Kez and the Elephant Man, do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> lists, yeah. Rick. I don't know if you saw in the paper. I think it's on TV this evening. It's, uh, as voted for by viewers of VH1, yeah. the music channel. Yeah. And they've basically come up with a list of the greatest pop culture icons. Uh, ever. Uh, there's a hundred. In Where's Central. Elvis? So Elvis, is, for instance, is number three. Jimmy Dean in there? James Dean is in there. I think he's a bit lower. Uh, let me see. He's, uh, number twenty-two. Twenty-two. We got David Beckham at number one. Oh, well, okay, well then, so, Robbie Williams is in there, so, so it's, it's British bias. Yeah, Robbie Williams is number nine. He's just, uh, just a below ABBA. Oh, number okay. Eight. But, mm -hmm. um, interestingly, this is of interest to you, I think, number sixty-six. Yeah. The Office. That's all right. Well, uh, it is, Rick. It's nice that the show is in there and that. Yeah. That's a very flattering thing. I'll tell you what cheapens it. I'll tell you what undermines it. Yeah. The things that are lower in the list than the show. Oh, God. So we've beaten... Well, Go I'll give, give you a little test. Yeah. Higher or lower? Do you think this is higher, near the top of most important pop culture icons or lower than ours? Okay, I'm going to give you, uh, Superman. Well... Uh, international, been around since the 30s, one of the mm -hmm. biggest icons on the planet. Mm -hmm. I say higher. Lower. But, yeah. Ludicrous. <laughs> okay. Do you think higher so... or lower? <laughs> Neil Armstrong, the first man <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> this guy's been to the moon. <laughs> well, I'd say, uh, I'd say lower then. Lower? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but is, is that saying the people behind the rocket or just him? Because he just sat in it, didn't he? He just sat there, yeah. he didn't do anything. But, no, but it's but the it's icon. What he's it's symbolic not, of. It's, yeah, it's not what, how much work went into it. Alright. Uh, a few others. What about things like Coca-Cola? Oh, no, they don't really count. It tends to be- uh, Oh, so it's not- They don't feature. I mean, Mickey Mouse is in there. Um, mm. what do you make- what do you reckon, Tom Cruise, higher or lower? Tom Cruise is the number one box office movie star in the world. <laughs> well, presumably lower, He's then. lower. He's number 81. <laughs> yeah. Just about scraped in there. And it really is a list drawn up by people who've just sat at home and looked along their video and book collection. Yeah. Um, office, well, yeah, that's good. Well, I think it is a reflection of that, but it's- it's always the same that they, um, you do an HMV poll and it's pet sounds, uh, revolver, let's get it on. Yeah. Robbie Williams, live through a lens. <laughs> exactly. Because it's, it's, you know, it's the people that vote, it's a reflection of like those massive, you yeah. know, what's big at the moment. I was the most powerful man in comedy, let's not forget. Yes. One year ago. Yeah. When will I be this year? See, if that had been the laziest man in comedy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you'd have got my vote. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly though, at number 26, <laughs> Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine. Oh. Well, anyway. Go on. But that's what I'm saying, I'm just interested in weird stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so about, am I. That's why little, you're on the show. Talking about little gay fellas and that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gay fellas. Uh, Northern Line. Beach, underground tube thing. Not train. the- not the boy band. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, apparently, on a, uh, on a Saturday night, late, I don't know what that is. Uh, if it, what, what, what time late is in the sort of gay community. As mm. we've discussed before, mm. yeah. but apparently the last carriage on the Northern Line, they all they all get in there. What do you mean they all get in there? They sort of take over the last carriage of the Northern Line on a Saturday night, right? And it's like the gay the gay carriage, right? And what exactly do they do? They just travel about on the Northern Line. No, just have a chat and that, and like uh, just you stick know, on the communards. How do you how do you know? Someone tell me. See this, I, I mean, I'm glad you've informed me because it wouldn't bother me, but I feel I should be told about these things because I'm likely to stumble onto that carriage mm. by mistake. And I'm not, it's not that it'd be a problem, it's just I might feel a little uncomfortable if there's a lot of people in, you know, the black, <laughs> the black leather gear and the moustaches, the hats. I mean, to be quite honest, they'd be annoyed. Of course. Because they'd be expecting something a little bit, you know. What do you mean? Well. They're good looking, most of them. Sure. <laughs> 
No, they are good-looking fellas, though, aren't they? What do you mean? What do you mean? They're just the, a lot of the gay, you know, they look after themselves and that yeah. and look good. Keep but themselves. Some of them know. work out, yeah. yeah. You see, this is the, the problem I have, because there's a lot of areas in London and elsewhere in the country where there's a sort of, you know, it's a gay thing, you know, it's a gay public toilet, or, or, or I don't mean it's gay public, it's not like a legal thing. It means a cottage. But it's a cottage, whatever. I mean, I remember being, um, in Bristol once doing something. <laughs> You're confused when I said it's a cottage. Yeah. That's a term for where gay people go in toilets to sort of meet and greet. Each other. Well, I, I, uh, Shake hands. <laughs> I was at, uh, the public library in Bristol once doing some studies from a sixth form, mm. and, um, I think the toilet was closed in the library, and I was dying for some time, and I popped out and there was a public toilet behind the library. I thought, I can't believe my luck. Dashed down there, it was about six-ish in the evening, I was working yeah. late, I was studying hard. Yeah. I went in there, and I swear to God, I saw two fellas. With the- Is that, is that unusual, or? Uh, well, no, that they were up to some hijinks. What, what, what they sort of like- Do you what? know the thing that struck me? What? One of them had bright red underpants. What do you mean? You saw, what, they were trans- actually doing, you know, we were having some kind of, you know, what? they were having relations. They weren't even in a cubicle, they were out in the- Where, where were the underpants? Well, around the- his ankles. No! Yes, I swear to God, I'm not gonna make this up! <laughs> what old were you? I don't know, like, how old you are in the sixth form? Sixteen or whatever? 16? Yeah, and what did you do? Well, I actually what, said- Well, you just joined in, what else did you do? <laughs> you might as well, I yeah. actually swore, I said, oh, F me. And then I went, oh, no, thanks. <laughs> no, I did, I swear to God. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> I went, oh, it's me. No, don't. Because I was panicked and I ran out. And as I was, and as I was walking out, a guy was coming in and I went, oh, hang on, mate. And then I thought, I better not tell him. I, I, I'll let him find out for himself. He might be going there to join in. He might have got a call. Come down. We're, having, we're going crazy on each other's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Come down. And it's conspiracy in Bristol. But what conspiracy. annoyed me, what annoyed right, me my was, lover. What a bit of car. <laughs> what angered me, Rick, was, uh, was the fact that I wasn't notified that there was not. I didn't know there this was, was no a, sign. And afterwards, I spoke to other people about it, and they said, "Oh, it's a famous gay haunt." But mm. what annoys me is I feel that they should put an ad in the local press, yeah. a big paper, like once a week, like you know, when they recall cars if they're damaged or, or there's a fault, or curries might bring back stuff if they're sort of faulty goods. They say recall and we'll give you money back. They what do you put suggest? An ad in the gay community should put an advert in that just says these are the hot spots. This is where you're likely to find us doing some stuff. If you're not gay, and you might feel uncomfortable. Avoid them and just list them or little pictures or you know a map or something, anything. Because like the gay tube thing, I Cock don't know. Fun. That's one, two, three, railway cuttings. <laughs> Well, not that. It's more of a kind of, it's more of a sort of social awareness thing. Yeah. So people, you know, don't feel uncomfortable and... But they don't want exactly to be like, sort of walking <laughs> under a neon sign. Why? It's, it's legal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, big arrows. <laughs> oh, as if. What do you mean? What's wrong with that? Because, well, it's actually a public place. I don't think, it, I don't think cottaging is well, strictly legal. But, but even if you specify what they're going to do. But some people, they're not, some of them aren't, I don't think it's probably seen gays, is it? Yeah, but it's not, yeah, but it's not the people that go out and they say I'm gay and I like Barbara Streisand. It's presumably the sort of people that do that are people that either aren't quite out yet or, do you know what I mean? Or they're, they're, they're doing having a quick one over the way to their wife and kids. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know completely how it works, but I'm sure there probably isn't a place like, um, uh, free bumming here tonight. <laughs> no, there is kind of. What? Because I, I was walking home one night through Soho, right? Mm. Um, just cause that's the way I have to go, not cause I choose, you know what I mean? I, uh, I wasn't going there for, on that, right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm walking so through, right? right? And, um, I was handed like a, a card, which was like a gay event, yep. right? Now that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, Straight away he's presuming that because I'm there that time of night. Well, and you've got a shaved head and you sort of like, you know, you sort of like quite look after yourself and you've got some nice clothes. Yeah, but it's still, you And you, you look like a little presume. bit rough, don't you, from Manchester. It was you, a, look like, you look like a northern rent boy who comes down well, to well, stand outside of McDonald's. But and, the card was rubbish, right? What do you mean? Had this fella on it, yeah. right? All sort of greased up and that. Where would you look? Just having a look, what, what he'd handed me and that. Sure. Right. Just having a look. A uh, picture of him, sort of sailor's hat on, tan body. <laughs> Like, just his arse out, like that. <laughs> and, uh, rubbish slogan, right? The best bum in W1. <laughs> <laughs> is this bum there a noun or like a verb? What do you mean? Well, to bum. Is it like, get the best bum you've ever had? Or, he had the best bum? I think it's just I don't suppose you asked. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you called the number to check. <laughs> what do you mean exactly by this? Does it mean you've got a great ass? Do you I mean I will good? be well bummed 
Or do you mean you've just got a good- Come on now, let's- let's Well, just a final point about- because I asked my friend how it all works up on the Heath, because I live in Hampstead Heath, near Hampstead, and I was where I didn't want to go walk in and get involved, Mm. get myself involved in (laughs) it. How can you get involved? No, but again, I didn't want to walk- (laughs) So like, is it like, oh, I can't believe it, I I couldn't say no. (laughs) Oh, my wrist, it's knackered. What do you mean, what, I was there for about two hours, I must have gone about 43 of them. (laughs) But you know, I didn't like to say no, because they were just, they were so pleased to see me. <laughs> oh, well, it's God. not so much the fear of that. It's not. It's not good a, skiing practice. I was doing two at a time for a little <laughs> it's while. It's not the fear of that so much <laughs> as the fact that again, you don't want to gate crash someone else's party. You, do, you know what I mean? No. You don't, if so, if, there, if there was a straight couple having sex, you'd want. Oh, I'm sorry, and you'd want to avoid that area. You, yeah, you, of course. But I find so someone told me, and someone told me how, they, how it works. And apparently, you just go and you know, like sit on a bench or something, and yeah. then a guy just sits on the bench and they just look at each other. There's not really anything said. It's just a kind of nice evening or whatever. You know, I guess it's like two in the morning or whatever. And then they go off in the bushes and ding dong. <laughs> but I, it's like I don't know how that culture's developed. This is, I love this program. But now. Why can't that be the case with women? <laughs> that would be amazing. You just go out to the park <laughs> at one in the morning. You just sit on a bench. You just be like a scene from Gigi. Exactly. Where they, yeah, he's just walking along with a perambulator. Yeah. Uh, oh. Exactly. You, but that would just be a joy if there was none of this formality. You've got to talk to them, buy them dinner. Oh, you know, you're joking. Romance. Oh, no. Just this kind of informal thing. It so would what, be great. So what do you, what would you, what would you do then? You'd go up to a woman and go, come on. Yeah. Let's, let's stop mucking around. We well, you know there's why a, we're both sat on this bench. There's a, there's a nice, there's a nice bush over there. Yeah. Let's have a bit. Yeah, and then she'd go, yeah, great, thanks. I'm, you know, I'm killing some time before I, you know, pop into Tang. Yeah. That'd be perfect, thanks. You make my weekend. So you're jealous of gays as well In as me? In a sense. In a way. What do you think, Carl? Let's put a track on. Why are you getting scared <laughs> now? Yeah. You pulled it up. Is, is it you? Is it getting too close to the bone, so to speak? <laughs> Strokes, twelve fifty one on XFM one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What are you on about? Done loads of stuff. Slag, like slag Suzanne off. Yeah, brilliant. First link. Yeah. Talks about trannies. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Same old, same old. Yeah. Let's have something new, something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet. Yeah. Your Bible, mm-hmm. where you get all your information about the world and the universe <laughs> and morality from. And you know, like how I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it. I just read read the headline. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Anna Nova. I sort of nicked that idea to grab you. <laughs> right. so you so to, nicked what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right. These are stories. But the headlines already existed. That was why you thought nah, that was going to. Not make. like this though. All right. <laughs> Headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh God! You don't My need... racing shoes could stop elderly falling. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could you read that anyway? I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> read on I mean? anyway. Well, read... you have a look at that in a bit, right? All right. So, oh, like, okay. so what this is right. frustrating radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, you, it's not on. They've <laughs> turned it off. If yeah. you want to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in. Bong. In a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. <laughs> right. Bong. Right, right, look it up. Look it up on the internet. Right. Anna Nova. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. <laughs> oh, uh, brilliant. oh, brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for 60 years. <laughs> Oh, bong! This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I know that! Don't go down on this one, this is very good. And, oh. uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one I did read on about. <laughs> I love like that. that all those, that's the one he read on about. Go on then. Just, um... Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No! <laughs> I was rubbish. But what are the rules on on world records and that? I don't I don't know if there are rules. There are certain things you can't I mean it's it's the Guinness Book of Records, isn't it, really, that's the arbiter, isn't it? Yeah, but 
Is there anything, if you said you wanted to do it, would they say, well, you can't do that? Yeah, they've, they've stopped some gluttony records, obviously things that are in danger, it's anything that's illegal, yeah, anything that's immoral. Yeah, like that, that American serial killer that just got discovered yeah. having killed 47 women, I don't think he can make that into the Guinness Book of Records. No, because uh, people would be trying to beat it, won't they? <laughs> but there was some, some other story about a fellow eating watches and that. That can't be good for you. So why don't they say, look, don't do that, do something else? He wanted to stay regular. <laughs> do you know what, what do you I mean? mean? I just, I just wondered. What do you mean he was any... eating watches? He just said he was eating watches. He, he got he had about three in about a minute. How did he? How did he time it? <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? And then the other thing is the one, the one that I was reading the world record with the fellow who's pulling a train with his mm. teeth. Mm. Does does that make any difference that he's done it with his teeth? What do you mean? Well, what difference does it make? Well, isn't it? It's quite hard to pull a train with your teeth, I imagine. Well, it's pretty hard to pull a train. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is it is it because he couldn't beat the fella who's pulling it with his hands? Well, that's so you the, tweak this it is my point. There's the, I think there was the one bloke with the record for the backwards running backwards hundred meters was sort of like eleven and a half seconds. And I was thinking, turn around, you'd probably you'd probably have a really good go at that. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like doing a marathon with a milk bottle on your head. <laughs> Take the milk bottle off and see how fast you can go, <laughs> you <laughs> twat. But you can just tweak it like the fella who has done the pegs on the face, right? Yeah. Um, his name's Gary Stretch Turner, right? <laughs> right. So, he's sort of cheating already if he's, if he's got a stretchy head, right? <laughs> but, but- You are, right, <laughs> d you are one of the most stupid humans I have ever met. Well, get me in the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But listen. <laughs> So Gary, Gary Stretch Turner, right? His record is 153 <laughs> pegs. Yeah. He did it again, and he only got 150 on. <laughs> so he hasn't broke his own record. Right. But what I'm saying is, if he tweaked it a bit more, would that make a new record? What? Well, if, if he said, I've got 150 pegs on, but at the same time as eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I see yeah. what you mean, yeah. yeah. He'd be the, or, or the it, world or record breaker for pegs and eating burgers at the same time. Yeah, just change it a bit. If you know <laughs> you're not going to make it, just do something else. I'm assuming the rules are set at the beginning, Carl. That's yeah. it. That's where they say, right, you're just going to do the pegs thing. You're not going to introduce burgers halfway through, are you? Definitely not. <laughs> and okay. then they have a go. I was on one leg, not interested. How many pegs? 150. Can I just ask very briefly, I was quite interested by the family had to move because they lived on Butthole Road. Yeah, I quite like that. Now, I, I don't know if I've told you before, Rick, where I used to live. I'm not going to tell you the name of the street that I used to live on, because not on air, because my parents still live there and I don't want right. you know. But I'm going to write it for you now. This is the name, the genuine name of the street I used to live on. And just imagine when you're at school. Yeah. And oh. like in class, for instance, in French, you've got to say, they've got, you've got to answer where you live. Yeah. J'habite, wherever. Yeah. That's the name, this is actually the name of the street we lived on. No, it's not. I swear to God. <laughs> that is... Uh, I'm absolutely right. I could phone my father now and he could confirm that for well, you. Well, no, I swear because he doesn't want to... That's... God. And I tell you that... What, but listen, do you know what worries me? It's the apostrophe S. I know. Because that's blatant. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. But imagine how embarrassing So if was. I look that up in the Bristol... You will find that in the Bristol A to Z. I swear that to God. That is really... Why have you never told me that before? I can't believe I haven't. That's I'm incredible. I'm still embarrassed now. Do you know if whenever I have to phone up, if I have to give that address, I always spell it instantly. Really? Like somehow that will hide it. That'll disguise the name. But it's interesting. My friend Rufus, his parents lived in a place called Fockingham. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> when he was growing up, they, li he lived, they lived in Fockingham. Yeah. They moved to a village called Fingering Ho. No. I swear to God. Really? Amazing. Oh well, God. Perhaps you come from an amusing town or street. Hello, well, mate. Not fingering her or fucking them. Well, that's my business. <laughs> exactly. Well, this this family who's sick of living on uh, Butthole Road, <laughs> right? Said the thing that pushed them over the edge was the sign was outside their house, and tourists were always coming, sort of having the picture taken with the pants down <laughs> next to the sign. <laughs> sure. Oh sure. no, and that's that's the thing that. What's it called? Butthole Road. Butthole Road, yeah. Well, yeah, that's bad luck, isn't it? That is bad luck, isn't it? Who named it that, though? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it's not as if they've named it that after they've moved there. They bought the house knowing, oh, there's a lovely house here, so where, where you live, what road it's on? Well, I'm gonna go, well, it doesn't matter, I'll look at the house. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Well, where, where am I going? Where am I seeing this Well, house? I'll take oh, you there, I'll take you there. I'll take you there. Well, so, you don't need to look, just don't, don't look at that sign, just come into that lovely house, isn't it? It is nice, yeah. Well, my family wants to come later to have a well, look at it. Well, just tell them to, I'll meet them by the bus stop and I'll drive them here. 
<laughs> you don't need to. You don't even know where you're going. You just, you'll just sort of know, won't you? You'll know from then on. How will we get letters? I've delivered to me if you want. I'll, I'll bring them. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring them round. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's incredible. But I can't get over that. Where Steve used to live. That's extraordinary. Isn't it? Anyway, if you perhaps live in Tits Avenue, yeah, <laughs> you know, or um, Wanklin Drive, <laughs> Wanklin Drive, just get in touch. Let yeah. us know. We're not really interested, but it no. might fill up five minutes. Let's play a record. Let's come back with another of Carl's amazing quizzes. I'm going to Spunkton later. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, you're perhaps yeah. gonna do, because uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, yeah. but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club environment. Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing a, a party and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know very well that when I was put, I put on a tune, they cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, they, were they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they were having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right, but they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. No, when I put on the no. proclaimers, they could not believe their luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dancing? They were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going, you know, more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take well. on me, came on, they, they, mm, the big, yeah. big cheer went up. Oh, I don't know, I believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well. Oh, know. it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up, and these are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, making, making music, music his didn't DJ happen. outfit. Didn't happen. I did, I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment. <laughs> and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> <laughs> but you're safe, aren't you? You're behind the little thing with the yeah, flashing lights. Yeah, but I don't, still a lot of people and that. Forced fun. I don't like that. Forced it's fun. It's not forced fun. They haven't got to dance if they don't want to dance. Yeah. Don't like it. What do you mean your fortunes are on the up anyway, DJ? Well, I'll tell you, I was uh, hired, well, I say hired, I did it as a favour to a friend, uh, his wedding the other week. And I got there, I was thinking, yeah. Cos I, you know, everyone was, everyone had, had their little role to play, and then people were doing a good job. I love you taking it seriously. And I did, I spent wedding. ages putting together some CDs, <laughs> special selection CDs. I love that! Cos what I did was I, I burned them on iTunes. Did you turn up with your own headphones round your neck? O own headphones, wearing a suit, but headphones. A metal case. Didn't need it, just had them all in one small box. <laughs> Brilliant. Boom. Um, I thought this is good stuff. I got some classics here. Give me an example. Give me an example of the, like the, the, the first hour, the warm up hour. Rick, um, I've, I'm coming straight in with, uh, Frankie Valley. Oh, what a night. Brilliant track. I mean, when those beats start at the beginning, who's not getting on the dance floor? Dun, 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 Wait a minute, what's dun, this following up? Dun, go on. It's the Jacksons. Well, I want you back. I want you back. Brilliant. It sounds good at the moment, Carl. Yeah. So, Go um, on. I'm thinking, like, at least I'm gonna, I'm gonna roar this, but, because, you know, they laid on a good spread, the ceremony was nice, food was nice, I'm thinking this is gonna be the, the piece de resistance. Yeah. Alarm bells started ringing. Why? When I realised there was a marquee outside. Of course, it's a balmy summer evening. I'm stuck inside. Oh. On the dance floor inside, I'm thinking I'm gonna be struggling here to get them in. <laughs> even with, even with flavours like this, I thought I'd struggle, Rick. <laughs> so I'm sat there in my suit. <laughs> There, I'm sat behind this little, I'm sat behind this little DJ console. <laughs> I've got to all the big numbers. There's one or two people making some token effort, but frankly, most people are outside. Everyone oh, no. the time. I was livid. Of course, they couldn't hear it out there. So I was playing to an empty room, really, and I was furious. I was absolutely furious because oh, no. I mean, what is you know, you're wasting my time. <laughs> you're wasting now. I could have just stepped the CD on. They're wasting Frankie Valley's. Wasting Frankie Valley's. They're time. wasting the Jackson Five's. They're time. wasting you know, D-Light's time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so I'm sat there and there's, not, yeah, there's a couple of people making a cursory effort, mainly when they come to get a drink from the bar, they might have a little no. quick, you know, couple of two. You shout, we don't want your not interested. Or, or, either yeah. all of you or, or no all one. All of you or no one at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then there's, there's a microphone set up because people have been doing speeches. This little girl gets on the mic, right? It's being funneled through the speaker system. So every time I put my headphones on, oh, I Miss can, Dynamite, was it? <laughs> it wasn't sadly Miss Dynamite, although <laughs> she decided to, uh, have a little go at MCing. She was screeching a little head How off. old is she? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine. <laughs> at their most annoying. <laughs> when, when children are at their most annoying, because they've got a bit of confidence there, they're a bit cocky, they're not shy anymore, they're a bit arrogant. <laughs> yeah. She's screeching her head off, so I'm playing, you know. <laughs> oh, she doesn't know. Look at your face! I'm playing into the groove, no one's getting into the groove. <laughs> because she's, because she's going mental. She's just going, ah, you know, 
What's this? What's this? I don't know what this is. Play something I know. Oh. I think I haven't got any like, DJ Otsu or <laughs> Crazy Frog. I'm not gonna play what, what you- So she's just screeching along, ruining it for everyone. <laughs> I say everyone, there was no one there, so me, she was ruining it for me. <laughs> I bet you were really I'm angry. Furious. But of course as well, every time she screeched, it went through my headphones. <laughs> so I- uh, so, of course, I'm here, and then this, her dad comes along, right? And I'm oh. thinking, all right, he's gonna, he's seen what's happening. I just imagine happening. you in your suit, sweating, getting annoyed at someone Living. ruining your set that yeah. no one's listening to. No one's to. listening to. <laughs> I think, oh, well, her dad's coming over, he's gonna put, put pay to this. He's realised that, you know, she's causing a disturbance. He comes over there, joins in! No. Sits her, sits her on the lap, on his lap, he's just saying, she's having a whale of a time, I'm thinking I'm furious. I'm thinking it's his responsibility to shut her up, he's yeah, not gonna do anything. I what agree. can I do? I can't step in. No. And I know very well that if I interfere, he's gonna say, oh, well, she's enjoying herself and no one's dancing anyway, and we'd have just got into a frac car. Yeah. I didn't want to start a fight. No. Cause so, um, I don't know, but he'd have knocked you out, wouldn't he? Someone would have got knocked out. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying who it would have been, but, you know, but there was, to bear in mind, Rick, there would have been two of them. <laughs> And, um, so I didn't want to get into a fight with him. And, uh, anyway, so I'm playing. Anyway, so my friend came along, he, he, he realised what was happening, and I didn't have the guts to, uh, to unplug the microphone. Cos uh, he'd have known, you see. Yeah. So I got my friend to do it when she had her back to me. <laughs> so he pulled the plug out, she, the microphone went dead, she went, what's going on? I went, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, I don't know. She said, where'd the microphone go? I said, you must have broken it. Oh, I don't, I don't God. know what's going on. Someone will probably make you pay for that. And, uh, anyway, at least we shut her up. <laughs> that is great! But, uh, <laughs> but it just went, it really went from bad from worse. And, and you know there's that thing when you panic, you start panicking, so you start, you're putting on a lot of flavours that you would have saved to the, to the last hour. What are we talking, boom, boom, shake, shake, Exactly, you're throwing him in early, Love Shack's yeah. coming on way too soon. Really? Oh, Love Shack before 11, <laughs> I, it's heresy, but I had to do it. <laughs> But anyway, in the end, the, uh, the, I made the bride go and get some people in. I thought, I said, look, it's your special night, <laughs> alright, and they're gonna enjoy this. I'll be honest, love, this is a washout, and it's up to you <laughs> exactly. to turn this wedding yeah. around, or I'm walking. I'm walking, and I tell you, they're gonna have a sour memory of this evening, yeah, unless you bring so some people in. Yeah, so go and get everyone in dancing. So, I, so she got them in at the end, and, Brilliant. and I'll tell you this, Carl, I mean, I don't know what you say, but they were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. A bloke came over and said, have you got Amarillo? I said, no, but I put on something even better, Delilah. I have never, I mean, wedding crowds always go for Delilah. Less, uh, a song, of course, about old man killing his wife. It always goes down very well, strangely, at weddings. Yeah. They get into a sort of hokey cokey thing. They went yeah. berserk for it. And I was following it up with, I had the monkeys, I had all sorts going on. Brilliant. Of course, you know what happens. What? I'm going go great guns. People are absolutely loving it. They're rocking it. I throw in, um, uh, Oh, I, I had something cracking on at the end of- Come on, Eileen, of course, was on. People sure. were going berserk for it. Which is unfortunate, because the bride's name was Eileen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, then the bride pipes up, I'm throwing the, uh, bouquet. So they all traipse off outside again. Oh. I was furious! Oh, no. I grabbed- I plugged the microphone back in, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> We got, you know, but they went out, then of course you can't get them back once they've done that, because all the women are running around, I got the, I got the, you know, thing, no. and then they got to wave everyone off, throw the confetti. They, ru they ruined your day. I was having a great time and they ruined it. She ruined your special day. She ruined my special night. Oh, no. You know, what, would you, her head. what would you put on about now, Carl? What if I was DJing? Yeah. Probably about a world party. Go on, Interesting. Um, yeah, I... I sort of feel like, you know, one thing we've never done, Rick, is we've never pandered to people, but as it's the last show, um, we've got to give the audience what they want. Right, what's this? Well, yeah, and I was gonna say things they don't want as well. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, and, well, just basically to keep a smile on Carl's face. Yeah. Uh, I say a smile, a sort of, not quite a scowl. Yeah, he never really smiles. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just really as a, a chance for him to have a go. It's like, you know, you, you indulge a, an annoying child. The only time Carl laughs is for no apparent reason. Yeah. What well, do you think, like? What do you mean? Well, it seems like you go, <laughs> and I know you'll be thinking of what a monkey could do. Yeah, it's like it's like people who've had electroshock there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, imagine tied down, biting on exactly, something, yeah. biting on a big leather pad. Uh, let me just tell you briefly what the, the prices are. It's that, the number. That looks like a piece of shit. You know, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. There's a number of uh, there's a number but, of mediocre CDs and DVDs. That, that is real. But tight, mainly, that? what about this? It's the Lord of the Rings collector's edition. Oh. What the movies you're thinking? No, it's no. the Radio Four adaptation. It's uh, it's only 14 hours long, Rick. Oh, that is. Throw that away. <laughs> so, pop that in the bin. <laughs> so, that's that is <laughs> just I'll pop it. Either pop it in the bin or send it to some poor bastard who wins this quiz. <laughs> exactly. If you're willing to take part in the quiz, you deserve. Uh, Fourteen hours, you'd be like yeah. wasted with that uh, Tolkien tripe. <laughs> <laughs> so right, yeah. What are the clues then, uh, Carl? Right, as always, just you know, cryptic clues no. and that. Initials of a band or an artist. Yeah. Work it out. Yeah. Win the win the stuff. Yeah. Um, Email only. Yeah, Ricky Gervais, uh, xfm.co.uk. First clue is as follows. Um, 
the, the Jamaican fella wrote a review <laughs> for Football. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the girl Jamaican fella. He's back. Fella. <laughs> the oh, fella. It's the last show the little Jamaican fella's made an appearance. <laughs> this, uh, normally suggests that you need to think of the answer in a Jamaican accent. Yeah. Or not. Yeah, or not. Yeah, Can any I accent. Say or an accent. <laughs> or pronounce the word slightly differently. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, go on. The Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Alright. Yeah. DC is on the initials. DC? D for yeah. Derek? Yeah, okay. DC. The Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. That's the first one. Um, second one. It's three of them. Second one is, uh, we should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, Copperfield, The Great Soprendo, Tommy Cooper, and Darren Brown. We should all vote for them. Why is that? What was. <laughs> what was the I just got the first one. E S. E-S. Right. E-S. Okay. And the last one, um, Steve, what did your dad do? Yeah? Steve, what did my dad do? What did your dad do? Is that the question or are you asking me? Well, uh, Ricky, what did your dad do? You can work on anyone. What right. did your dad do? Alright. Right? That's E. Right? What so, did your dad do? Quickly again, the Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Right? DC. Second one, we should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, yeah, yeah, Copperfield, yeah, right. Greater Brand. No, but that's important, right? <laughs> <laughs> E.S. And the last one, you know, Steve, what did your dad do? Right? Okay. The initial E. Ricky so. Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We don't want to speak to you. Please don't phone up. Remember, you could win some Lord of the Rings tripe. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 more on XFM. Right. 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 Last rockbusters ever, thank <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's right. disappointing. Go on. Anyway, Rockbusters, right? Uh, right. First clue was uh, Jamaican fellow wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Yeah. Right, that was the cryptic clue. The initials were DC. Yeah. What is it? Come on, now you tell me. It's uh, it's Define Comedy. All right. Define Comedy. It's a Divine Comedy. <laughs> All right. What so, is that? <laughs> That's well, a just do the accent, accent again. Do the accent again. Oh, it's just divine comedy. That's the answer. Do the answer again. Do it again. You've got the answer. It doesn't matter. Let's move on. Right. <laughs> Second one. We should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, Copperfield, Great Soprendo, Tommy Cooper, and Darren Brown. Why Go is on. that? E S were the initials. Go on. Elec trick six. Right. What? Elec trick six. It works. So don't say it like that. <laughs> what? I, don't, I, don't, what I don't know what it means. Right. Well, there's six people there who do tricks and that. Right, I'm saying we should vote for them, so you elect them. Yeah, but he said elect. 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 Trick six. No, elect though. Elect. No, elect's not a word, is it? And the last one. Uh, I think elect's a word. Elect. Steve. You don't mean Alec, do you? It's not Alec Park. You're not trying to do Alec Park. The third one. Steve, what did your dad do? I don't know. That was E. Could work for anyone. It didn't have to be Steve, right? That was Erasure. Right? Erasure. Erasure? No, it doesn't work either. It doesn't work either. Does work. No, it doesn't work. work. Doesn't work. He was the winner. None of them work. None well. of them work. Another pile of crap <laughs> from the, <laughs> for the mind of little <laughs> stupid. Oh, dopey little. I'm oh. going to give the prizes to Martin Williams from oh. Flintshire. I don't know where Flintshire is. Uh, he says that he's uh, promised to listen to the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and by listen he means sell them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, um, thanks for coming in. Stupid. The end of Rockbusters from the stupid little shitty brain. I'm going to say it of Pilkington. <laughs> White stripes, hardest button to button on XFM. That's a frightening thought that you came up with before the break. Carl, Carl, jury service. Carl could be responsible for yeah. someone's rest of their life. Yeah. Because jury service, that applies to anyone. Anyone could get sent the form. You're, I think you're obliged to go unless you have a really decent reason not to. Imagine it was a really, really important trial. But what annoys me is that isn't it supposed to be you're tried by 12 good of men your and peers? True. 12 good, good, good men, men and, and true. true. Yeah. Good men and true. But, and women, of course. The only thing days. I can hope is that the defence attorney would wheedle out Carl <laughs> at an early stage. Oh yeah, objection. I object. Yeah. Why? I object. Have you heard of something called rockbusters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, we c you can't just object on that. Um, okay, then what if I tell you my client standing trial is a little gay Chinese fella? And here are some of the tapes <laughs> yeah. from XFM. What was he He's prejudiced. So how does it work then? How does what work? What do you mean? What you do just you get called up and you have to do you have to do jury service unless you've got a very good reason. And it's not I normally have Mondays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Oh, you wouldn't like that. Oh, oh, yeah, oh you, you have to get there at I've nine o'clock. I've got to prepare monkey news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you couldn't stand it. Just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What would you say? Say, oh, don't, don't get me involved. Because I got involved once. <laughs> don't get me involved! No. What do you mean you got involved once? Well, with the police and that, when I lived in Manchester, I saw a bit of car crime going on. Right. And I got involved. It hassle. I'm telling you. How did you get involved? You phoned the police? Yeah. Yeah, because I Snitch. thought, well, I know, well, that's just it, but I thought, I'd hope somebody Grass. did it with my, well. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just a hassle. Loads of phone calls. Canary. Having to stand on a balcony of this, you know, tower block that I lived in. Police shouting up at me, I'm stood there with me underpants on, right, and, and what it was, a car had been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So I call up this, they call up the, uh, the police and that, yeah. right? Said, right, listen, um, car's being robbed. And they said, where is it? I said, I don't know, just across the road from where I live, right? So I tell them where I live. <laughs> And Where do you live? How old are you? 13? So she's she's asking loads of questions and that. I'm saying, mm. look, whilst you're asking all this, they're actually getting away. So you know, we'll leave it. And she's like, no, uh, we'll track it down. Blah blah blah. So I said, well, look, I, I work nights. What could you see? You could see some, I could lads, see some lads just pushing, pushing a car. Pushing a car. Yeah, <laughs> that's how they steal cars in Manchester, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else in the country, they're getting in, they're driving them away. In the south, we, yeah, they drive them away. <laughs> exactly. Usually, sort of like in start Manchester. the engine. Can you get away a lot faster? <laughs> what, the, what do the police do? Push their panda car after them? <laughs> exactly. They come on, lads. Don't cheat. Don't get in the car. <laughs> exactly. They're just pushing it. It was late at night and that. And oh, okay. You don't want to start the engine. Of you don't wake people up. Not when you're nicking cars. Of course you don't. All right. No, so, no. No. So when it, is it late at night. Hold on. They weren't gay. They weren't gay, were they? They what, they what, 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 <laughs> they were out late, really. Come on, Carl, so what happened? So, anyway, so look, don't call me back, I'm going out of bed, <laughs> right, I've got work in a bit. Brilliant. So, um. Let's go, what? So that go, was that, right? Where are you working? Next thing, right, phone's going, uh, hello, it's the police again, I said, oh, I've told you not to call me. Right? <laughs> no, I told so you not to call me at home. So, um, they said, right, the police are outside, can you go on your balcony? She's like, oh. So I'm ten stories up, yeah. right? Uh, stood on the balcony with, with, like, me underpants on. Yeah. Right? And the police are saying, where's the car? And I'm saying, I don't know, they've gone down that road now. So I'm trying to point to them. They're shouting up, saying which road and all that. And I just thought, why did they get involved? Yeah. I don't think they found it. No. It was hassle. They, well, the, you know the I mean? blokes were pushing it too fast. <laughs> exactly. They were, by, they were in the next street by now, weren't but they? this is, this, don't get involved. Don't get involved. After um, that, that Imagine him being on a, some sort of trial where it was like, uh, some sort of mob. Affair. Yeah, and Ima murder. Imagine him going into the witness protection. <laughs> the police just explaining to him, your new name is Jeffrey Peters. Why can't I be called Bruce Wayne? Well, no. Mr. Pilkington, listen. <laughs> Imagine that. Do you know what, the, do you know what wit witness protection is? Oh, go on. <laughs> Amazing. Look, it's when, supposing you were to give evidence against the Mafia. Right, you've done a job for them and they had to give evidence against them, right? Cause right well, if you're gonna do, I mean, all I did was the two kids nicking a car. Yeah. Don't start messing with mafia. No, th listen. Of course not. No, but let's imagine. Imagine you're in the mafia and uh, that you got caught doing something. But instead of going to prison for the rest of your life, you said, "Oh well, I can I can give you Mr. Big." Yeah. So I go, "Okay, give us Mr. Big, and we'll let you off." Right. So the police go, "Right, okay." I got handed this leaflet in Soho. <laughs> 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 so you say you go right. I'll give you names. They go right. You get evidence in court, and you go yeah. They go right. We'll have to get your way because you'll you'll be done for. So you give us all the names of Mr. Big, right? We will give you a, a new identity, a new passport. We we'll, we'll get you, let you go and live in Canada for the rest of your life with Suzanne, right? So why wh why have I got to do all that? Cause they'll because they'll bump you off, won't they? They're because you know it was me. Because well, you have to give evidence in court. So they go oh, Pilkerton squealed. So you got to change all your life. Yes. Yeah. They've killed someone. Yeah. Yeah. D d well, look, you just know no, you're giving them in to s keep you from going to jail. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison because you're involved in some or sort or whatever. Does, how, how it, the, it doesn't matter, Carl. No, listen. I'm, I'm just. How would the mafia know that I've said something? Because you say in court, those are the people. That's he's Mr. Big. He's Mr. So and So. He he ordered the hit. Don't you know anything? It's a lot of messing around, though, isn't it? So I've no, got to leave this job, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah honest, I think they might try XFM first. I'd have to, what, I'd, I'd have to bin Suzanne, would I? No, no she'd go and live with you. You have to cut off all your ties with your friends and family, though. You can't contact them. You've got to leave them behind. Would she have to change her haircut? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when did the murder happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what would the new identity be that you'd choose? What would you choose for yourself? What name? Probably, uh, uh, 
I wanted to be called Brett when I was a kid. Okay. Right? Brett so, what? <laughs> Brett Pilkington. Uh, you gotta change your surname, yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M maybe go ex-directory. Where would you move to? Uh, probably, uh, probably back up north. No. Well, no. No, no don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, can I suggest, um, maybe, uh, Brett Hansen and, and go and live in, in Australia or Canada or something. Well, maybe when they're not operating, maybe, you know, and they just f forget it. You might have to change your identity as well. You might have to grow your hair, well, you can't grow your hair, but maybe wear maybe, a wig or a yeah. moustache. What would you do? What would you wear? So, like an afro or something. Something like that. That would yeah. be brilliant. <laughs> that would be absolutely brilliant. And I've got to do all, all that just because for five minutes I stood in a court thing yes. and said he's the one who did it. Yes. Yeah. Well, why can't, why can't I just wear the afro and the glasses <laughs> when I'm in the court, <laughs> say my name's Brett, right? Yeah. Change my voice a bit. He did it, and they go, thanks very much. I go off, I carry on my life. That's still coming in that on Saturday. I don't know why they haven't thought that. That is genius. I, I don't, don't know. That is all the witness protection scheme. Why don't they do that? Yeah. So they go, well, I'll go to court as Brett Hansen <laughs> yeah. with an afro, and I don't like that. Yeah. Right? And then when I come out, I'm back to Carl Pilkington, still talking like that, <laughs> yeah. but without the afro. <laughs> that is well, perfect. Done. You've got- Why don't you call the FBI and say, listen, I can save you billions <laughs> of dollars a year. You're a genius, Carl. All right. Well done. Or Brett, should I say. Born Again, Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. We're back. It's the 1st of November. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's the same old email address if people want to get in touch. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've had a couple of emails, Rick. Someone, Go actually, on. Ian, he's emailed in. He said that because of the blinking post postman, it's yeah. his wife's birthday today. She's had no cards or oh. presents because, uh, presumably because she's got no friends, but also because of the. The postal strike. But you won't be able to use that excuse for Suzanne's birthday again because she knows that the postal strike won't be on. Around that time. <laughs> Alright, Carl. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, so would you just say happy birthday to Tracy? Have those condoms run out yet that you got for Christmas? Oh, Carl. I still got them. Have you? Hmm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> just say happy birthday to Tracy. It'll make, happy birthday, it'll make Tracy. Her happy. And hello to Aidan, who's uh, thrown in to let us know he's actually listening in Northern Ireland. Oh, God so bless we're, him. we're, we've gone international. Sure. Now there's uh, also a question here. A questionnaire has been sent in by, uh, Ruth Chamberlain at Cord Wainers College. Cord Wainers College? <laughs> Seems a weird. Cord Wainers? It used to, yeah. It's, it's either used to be a poly or a laundrette. <laughs> I, I think it's, to. yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's something that she's doing for, um, she's studying product design for the fashion industry. And anyway, she's got, um, some questionnaire. And we're obviously, we're too busy and important to fill out the questionnaire. But we thought maybe you could answer it, Carl. Look, about Carl, look, he's yawning, he's looking round. He's only got to do two hours and he gets a whole day off and he's getting paid for it. Do something, Carl. Be grateful. You've probably, you've probably ruined a man's career. He's been ridiculed now for doing this. That, that he's so weak where he should have slapped, squ squoze your head and kicked you out of the building. So, let's have a little bit of effort. You've only got an hour and a quarter to do, then you get two days off, alright? Alright. Right, Carl, it's a questionnaire about happiness. Oh, yeah. There's one person- <laughs> <laughs> Well, that should answer it right there. The first question, Carl, on a happy scale of one to ten, where are you on the happy scale? Uh, Is it at this moment or in general? Well, I would say generally. Okay. Yeah, but you don't always have to like- oh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm happy in that, but I don't always show it. You never show it? No, but it doesn't mean I'm not I'm not happy in that. Like I, I'm all right at the moment. I'd say I'm probably on a. It's probably on a, about an eight. I was a, I was probably on about a nine when I woke up, right? <laughs> and then, uh, sort of fell out with Suzanne over her haircut. Yeah. Right. She went for a haircut and came back with something that I didn't like. What? Sorry. What did you say? <laughs> you so so when your girlfriend walked to the door, she had her hair done. You said I don't like it. All right. Do you well, say she that? could tell by the look on my face. I, I, but, I said, but, but don't you say, no, I'm, I'm happy with it, I just, just can't tell. I'm loving it. Because I'll... then she might have it done again. Oh, uh, Carl, I just cannot know. get over you. I really can't, no, I No, but cannot... you haven't seen it. Right? Oh, st so, so then I was fed up, but what, then I thought- Sorry, what authority have you got uh, to talk about haircuts? Yeah, you had that, you had the, uh, well, officially from a, a barber in Manchester above a railway station in a shack that was two pounds a cut, told you you had the hair of a Chinaman. Well, you <laughs> wish you had the hair of a Chinaman now, you got nowhere. <laughs> You're a little bald man with your mouth open, so don't- c Is she listening to this, Suzanne? Sitting at home with a woolly hat on? <laughs> I don't know. Well, she knows now, doesn't she? What did you say? What, what did she do you about say? it, I though? I just said you look like someone out of Slade. <laughs> Interestingly, oh, no. that's what I look for in a girlfriend. Oh, God. Which one oh. is Slade? Well, that one with the not, funny, uh... Not Dave Hill. 
Yeah. The one with the crooked fringe and the goofy- she yeah. has her teeth done as well, did she? She had two <laughs> front teeth put in. Dump her. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> So, so prior to that you're on a nine, then you saw the haircut, you're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, what you're uh, on? I'm probably on about a six at the moment. Why? What's happened? Well, while well, Star Sailor was on, a bit more head squeezing going on. <laughs> so, yeah, about a five or six. So, generally speaking, <laughs> what would you say you are about on? About four. You are on about <laughs> four for <laughs> All right. Uh, what would you give someone who wasn't very happy? What would you give them? Uh, what are you thinking, Carl? Depends why they're not happy. They're not- they're low, okay, so what would you give them? I mean, if you- if, yeah, depends, innit? If it's someone who's just lost their arms and legs in an accident, you don't give them a lollipop. Sure. Or some mittens. Y yeah. <laughs> you give them a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And- oh, and, oh. dare I say it, a smile. <laughs> a skateboard! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you don't no! know. You gotta answer the question. Alright, so hang on, let, let's assume that you've upset your girlfriend because you slagged off her haircut. What right? you do you now feel to guilty. make her happy? How are you gonna cheer her up? Uh, and not buy her a baseball cap? <laughs> I don't know yet, I haven't thought about it because I've got this to sort out, haven't I? <laughs> so w w when I get home, get her some gel or something. <laughs> Christ. Okay, oh. and uh, oh. all right, just name something that always puts a smile on your face, Carl. It always cheers you up. If you're feeling a bit blue, it always cheers you up. A monkey, innit? Learning something. Right. <laughs> that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love the qualifier. <laughs> that's no, I a think bit it was weird. Too, I, do, I think it was two different seven sentences. <laughs> I think it was learning something. That's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, learning something that's a bit weird. Okay, and finally, um, if you could have something to make you happy, what would it be? Little chimp, wouldn't it? Little chimp in a suit. Well, don't answer for him. Don't put words into me. Uh, you can have anything you want, it'll cheer you up and make you happy. What would it be? You can't say a, a skin of titanium. It's got to be something possible. Yeah. X-ray vision. No. What, what would you have? It can be, it can be conceptual. It could be world peace. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a new watch. Yeah, like someone else wish for that. Sure. <laughs> It'd be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why uh, should you do it? And then someone else gets a nice new watch and there's world peace. <laughs> exactly. You're walking round, it's nice and peaceful, you know what time it is. He's swanning round, he's got a lovely new watch and there's no threat of him being bombed. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am, really. I don't, I don't really want that Are you much. really? But you're on a four. Yeah, yeah, You're on yeah, a happy yeah, scale of four. Yeah, you're on a four. Surely you want to get to ten. Surely the point of life is to be on ten. Yeah, but what's, what's a ten? Do you know what I mean? No. What's, what's a ten? Contentment, absolute contentment, joy Bliss. in your heart, yeah. inwardly and outwardly. Not walking around with a little round mank head with your mouth open going, what's the point of that? I've done it once. <laughs> Is that why you've still got all the condoms? You go, I've done it once. <laughs> what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna get over here. <laughs> some air gel. Come on, ten. Just one thing that would make you happy, that would cheer you up if you were feeling low. Tuesday's off as well? <laughs> I'll have the MD just, uh, you know, resign straight away, shall I? I honestly don't know what would make me happy just like that. Cause I, cause I am happy, I know you, I know you say I'm fed up and that. Do you know but, what, do you know what, he said, he, right. he, he wouldn't want to be too rich. He said, cause if I was too rich, then Suzanne would say, let's go around the world. He said he wants to be rich enough, so they're a a happy in that and they got their bathroom and everything, but they can't, they still can't afford any more holidays a year. Mm. Think of that. Think of that wish. Think of that capping your wishes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting a ceiling yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on your ambition. I love it. <laughs> it's genius. Look at his face. Play a record. You It's idiot. like if you'd won that ticket round Charlie's Chocolate Factory <laughs> <laughs> and he'd said, actually, Carl, I want you to take over the factory. It was a test. You'd have said, I just wanted to look around the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I'm and happy it, to go back it, and it, live. No, he'd have said, he said I'll, have, I'll work it, but I'm not working Mondays. <laughs> exactly. Play a record. Imagine giving a Chocolate Factory to a kid. I know. Idiot. Give it to the fat one at least, he yeah. enjoyed it more. David Bowie, Sorrow, on XFM 104.9. Nearly there, but, you know, we're working our way up to the grand finale. The bit where Carl spouts absolute nonsense from a dodgy source on the internet about a monkey who did something impossible. Let's cue up the jingle. Hang on. All right. Perfect. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right. Uh, 
Let's have a look. This one's from, uh, <sighs> from some woman, right? Yeah. And she's, um, she was taking part in the London to Brighton bike ride, right? Mm. Lovely day, weather's good and everything. What year? She's, uh, just a couple, a couple of months ago. Um, she's done all the training, right? Done all the training and stuff. Mm. Uh, got a brand new bike for it, got a little puncher outfit and stuff, all set for the day, right? It's a nice day, she sets off, they all start pedalling and that on the way to Brighton, yeah. right? So she's, she knows the route and that, got a little headphones on, cycling along. Uh, suddenly... Right, okay, I'll stop you now. Um, if, uh, a cyclist overtakes her, <laughs> and it's going really fast and it's sort of hunched over, but it's got, like, lots of cycling gear on and a helmet and goggles and they can't tell what it is, but they just know it's a, like a, a uh, little hairy, um, fella, um, who hasn't bothered shaving his legs, which is weird, isn't it? Because cyclists usually shave their legs, and this bloke had really hairy legs. But, um, and it won, they gave it the medal, it won three years running, they gave it the key to the city, uh, it had its own game show, and then well, someone said, hold on, though, this fella's sort of hunched over and he's only three foot five and his arms are longer than his body, uh, it's a chimp! If it goes anywhere near that, we're never doing it again. More monkey news next week. <laughs> <laughs> she's cycling so along. So anyway, she's cycling along, right? And uh, this tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't predict that. <laughs> There's oh. always one element you can never anticipate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a kiddie's tricycle with a little kid on it, little hairy kid with a helmet. Okay, just go on then. Well, a tricycle comes. Whizzing past, yeah, thing. strong legs in there, chimps. So she's thinking that's, but didn't get a chance to see. The oh thing. yeah, couldn't quite see the cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh god, you bold mank git. Go what? on, yeah, research scientist Carl Pilkington. So, <laughs> so anyway, she gets to the end line, right? Yeah. And um, they got talking. That's it. Was a nice day, nice race, and all that. <laughs> so did you see? Uh, a little, little thing on a tricycle. Thing? Well, no, well, 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 person, surely, just a human. Did you see that, no, did you see that bloke on the tricycle? So anyway, oh, turns tricycle. out- tricycle? Yeah! But what did you say thing? Well, no, that's, well, was no suspicious. I mean, what did you say, did you see that fellow on a tricycle? <laughs> anyway, so it turns out- Go on. It was a chimp. You're joking! <laughs> right? Well, Christ almighty, there you go. <laughs> Unbelievable, and it was a chimp all along. So anyway, right, so the woman's like, um... <sighs> We're never doing this again. Checking out the news, right? There's n there's nothing on it, she checks out XFM Monkey News. Right, okay, I'll I stop you there again. It. Right? If it turns out she doesn't lose, right, and the circus goes, we're looking for our <laughs> chimp, it used to ride this tricycle, and it escaped with police chasing <laughs> no, no, it. No, no, no. So she listened to XFM, see if I'd picked up on the story. <laughs> yeah, sure. She didn't, I didn't have it and stuff. Um, so she got in touch with the organisers of the London to Brighton bike ride, said, look, saw a little airy fella. Why did she care? Because she wanted to know, she thought it was a bit odd. Well, Turns out it was a chimp, they weren't happy about it. Of course not. Because now the owner of the chimp wants to enter it into the Tour de France. In, uh, in oh, 2005. <laughs> now, a couple of questions. I, I trust you'll be able to answer these. One. Oh, God! How, Steve, help me out. How did it get hold of the tricycle? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> don't know. Okay, no, that's fine. That's, that's, that's not an important know. point. Like, that's important. How What's the it... with you, Steve? He doesn't know that. How did it know <laughs> to... Uh, well, firstly, how did it know which way to cycle, but more importantly, how did it know there was a major bike ride on Follow that? Just it? following the crowd, no, Steve. No, What's the matter with you? The owner of it had trained it and so <laughs> far. <laughs> no, he hadn't! It had already done the run beforehand, before the big day. No, it hadn't. Um, uh, like I say, it wants to do the Tour de France in 2005. No, it doesn't. Um, but there's something about animal rights. If, if they don't let it enter, you, they can kick up a bit of a fuss. <laughs> It's cruel to make a chimp ride a bicycle. Not, Not if that it's to. prejudice that it'll go, is it because I is hairy? You idiot! Right. So. Wow, that is the worst. That is the worst <laughs> one yet. Absolute twaddle. Absolute rubbish, Carl. Have you got a tricycle? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs>
about uh, just building back up again a bit. Yeah. Why? Probably on about a five. Oh, that's not well, bad. What, what changed it? What changed it? Just calm down a bit. Yeah. So the chilled out vibes of PIMP probably helped you. Yeah. I think we should just say um, give massive props to uh, Adam and Joe who stood in for oh, us. Oh yeah, stood in for us. Uh, Did a great uh, job. Yeah, great, really good. In but, fact, interesting. Are, I listen to their their own, show. are they going to get their own show here? I think they should. Yeah, they'll probably get something. Well, there you go. Well, um, it's interesting because I was listening to them. And they they had quite a nice selection of features. They had a couple of good competitions and things. Now I don't know if um, having done them for XFM, is it somehow they may be kind of under some kind of XFM copyright, which would mean as we've got no ideas, maybe we could just hijack just some, of some of theirs. Maybe you could look into good. that. Obviously uh, not Monday. You're not here. But I was with Joe Cornish last night. Went oh, to a yeah. little um, do. Uh, uh, um, Jonathan's house and Joe was there and he walked in and I was taken aback by how tall he is sure because I've I, I'd forgotten and he's about six four but he's unlikely to do you know what I mean by mm. that it's mm. sort of like some people surprise you and um he was going yeah well, it's, it's, I don't consider um six four uh, big I said well, it's pretty big I said but I know what you mean I walk around with Steve Merchant yeah and uh he went how tall Steve and I six 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 foot seven yeah and Joe went oh that's that's a, that's nearly a disability isn't it do you know, he's absolutely right, as far as I'm <laughs> yeah, concerned. No, yeah, do you know, yeah. I've genuinely, since school, I <laughs> used to go to school with a little disabled fella. Lovely guy. No, I swear to God, lovely guy. And, do I remember he came in when we got in the sixth form, and he'd, he'd basically got, I don't know what the ins and outs of it were, but as far as I could tell, he'd got a car for free. A specially converted it, car. Yeah. You know, because he was disabled. And yeah. so he was driving Same as Carl, around. same as Carl. Me, me, me. I need this, I need that. But it seemed to me that I was thinking, well, why can I not get something similar? Because there are some cars I can't fit in. Because I'm too tall. I genuinely cannot drive the smaller cars, the cheaper cars. I've got, I'm obliged to buy a more expensive, larger car. Because I can't fit in the tiny Yeah, that's like saying you've got a pay more for your shoes because there's more leather, which is true. Which is absolutely true. It's no, a nightmare yeah, getting shoes. But fat people have to pay more for Do you know what? Their... It's a nightmare getting chairs, comfy chairs that I can sit in at the home. I, I sit in a chair for very long and my back's killing me. Now, how is that not a disability? But no, I don't see, I don't, you don't see people like me whinging. But I think tall people, uh, I've read an article that taller people on average, uh, get, uh, higher wages through something, through, you know, an advantage, or just because they're taken more seriously than little dumpy fellas. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think so there are, are I, I genuinely don't think there are many benefits of being really tall. People seem to assume there are, but beyond the fact that I can reach things down from a high shelf. I know. I don't think there's any real perks. I've seen you hit your head a few times. That's I, a disability. I, I know, I have seen you hit your head a few times, and I think, oh God. That must have hurt. Obviously, I'll make sure okay and then laugh. Of course. But I know it must be annoying. Thanks, mate. No, but I mean, there, there are, uh, there's, there's a pub. There's one pub in Soho that he has to go down backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he has to lean that. It looks like a limbo dancer. Yeah, I've, they've <laughs> almost got a lower me on roots. I, I always find it amusing. But, oh, it's, but like, for instance, on a plane, on an aeroplane, I can't get. Some of the seats I can't fit in. Some of the seats, not yeah, in any but way. That's not, not the way a disability that I because some what are you people, talking? How is that not a disability? There's some seats that people can't afford because they're poor. It's not that a disability. What, that's irrelevant. Don't go on a plane then because you're poor. But if you can't afford to go on a plane, you can't afford to go on a plane. You should have studied hard at school. But what annoys? Yeah, but I mean, what annoys me about that is there's there's this a, is there's, a physical disability yeah, I was I've born with. There's a there's a weight allowance, so I might not be allowed loads of bags on, but there might be a big fat. Pig in the queue who's allowed the same chocolate but allowance as me. But that's because they've been eating like a bloater. I couldn't stop myself from growing this tall. It wasn't a conscious decision. I didn't think, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I, won't, I won't smoke when I'm a teenager. Maybe I'll shoot up. <laughs> I'll eat healthy. I'll probably add an extra two feet. Uh, it well, just you, kept going. You do eat too healthy. You eat too, way too many greens. But that's not why I grew to this height. It's I a know, genetic well, thing, isn't it? Yeah, but if you live near, a, you know, a, some sort of pylon or something and just, as, as I say, smoked from an early age, you wouldn't have been that don't, tall. Don't think when I was a gangly teenager having the pitch taken out of me, I wasn't. <laughs> Thinking, I wish I'd been born near a pylon, <laughs> could you, you know, or Chernobyl. Could your mum or dad, like, could have, could they have banged you like they did with little? Uh, didn't they do that with someone's feet? Well, yeah, concubine. Yeah, I didn't they, come they out this with... tall, did I? No, but no, I like shot the How would they bandage it? They'd have to bandage him round the feet and round the top of the head. Yeah, I'd be walking around like a mummy. Yeah, 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 or a bonsai boy. But I, people didn't really realise I was going to be this tall until I was fourteen or fifteen. You know, you don't realise when you're an eight-year-old. How tall, tall, how tall were you when you were about like a gangly? Okay, so a typical gangly teenager, fifteen. How tall were you at fifteen? I don't know, six foot five maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you were like a beanpole, weren't you? Well, of course. Yeah. And what sort of glasses did you have? Cool. And then what did you have? I don't know, a monocle. <laughs> no, I can't remember. <laughs> Didn't you wear a bow tie once? Did when I you... wore a bow tie? I thought. I thought. I was trying to preempt the styles that might be coming round. I mean, I think I've been watching a lot of George Formby films, 
and I thought it can only be a long, it can only be a matter of time before the bow tie comes in. I thought it might be quite kind of urbane and debonair. Yeah. So what was that? Was for Robin what? Day at the height of his fame? I think he might around this time. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go for that dandy look. I thought that's what the girls <laughs> are good for. No, yeah. The dandy. Oh dear. So I, I just want to see my... you with a pipe and trilby. Yeah. I just think you'd look great I'd walking like on the boater. street. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I dear. genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowances it for being It doesn't count as a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But there how is... can you explain, for instance, uh, you know, travelling on a bus the, or a coach? There's some the seats I can't see. The only is, uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you, um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. What's that a disability? Are that people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah, it's the same okay. as the big fat people. And it's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get in the sort of, Steve's, the sort of stare. Steve well, obviously gets. I'm gonna- sorry Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than, <laughs> like, with you, the go, oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you it's more like, Jeez. <laughs> I, do you know what frustrates me? <laughs> I I thought he did deserve having a Monday off. I've changed yeah. my tune. Yeah. yeah. I was try sometimes I'm in, you don't realise this, listeners, but sometimes I'm an intermediary. I do step in when he's winding him up because yeah. Carl gets to the point where he's going to explode. Yeah, and it's crazy. Says, okay, Jeff, let, leave and him I for step in, while. and this yeah. is the kind of response I get from Carl. This is the kind of back chat I get. Well, I tell you, he's a little user. Because I'll tell you what, because he's too scared of winding you up because he knows that you'll just walk out of here and he won't get his Monday off. Absolutely. Play a record, you little oik. Weasel. She You're a weasel. Here in 1972. <laughs> Cemetery Gates by The Smiths, of course, off the Queen Is Dead album. Lovely tune. Great Makes you happy, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's a nice song about dead people. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, um, just wondering what your opinions are, what your thoughts are on. on Britney Spears. Uh, liked a couple. Bit bored. She, mm. I think she's panicking a little bit. I think she's a little bit desperate with all this Madonna stuff. Yeah, all the kind of lesbian. Yeah, and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, um, yeah, she's all right. I've got nothing against the girl. Well, I read. I think it was in Hot Tickets magazine. Sure. Uh, it's free with the Evening Standard. Yeah. Um, oh, I might get some free Evening Standards now. I've plugged that. Yeah. Um, I uh, she's reading in there that I don't know if it's still going to happen, but apparently she was going to do a little cheeky appearance at G A Y. G A Y. The, in uh, in London. And, uh, obviously I was quite excited, because I'm a Spears fan. Do you know, sorry, do you know that's what that spells, don't you? G-A-Y? Yeah. Gay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is a gay club. Oh, sure, This is what I, This is what I was ascertaining from the article. Oh, because they've, yeah, so they've yeah, said, yeah, they've yeah, just yeah. said, they've called it what, sort of what it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, um, and it was apparently she was gonna, she was gonna be, uh, previewing some of her new album, live on stage, at GAY, and that's an intimate venue, normally you'd have to see someone like Spears, probably at Wembley Arena, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm a Spears fan, you know, get up a couple of the gang together. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Some of the lads. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, Cruise down there. Yeah. Uh, but then I read on in the article that apparently, the doorman at GAY were only gonna let in, uh, regulars, and the way they were going to ascertain if you were a regular was by asking a series of questions at the door. What, testing if you're testing really- Now, I don't know if the questions would be about the interior of GAY. Or the interior of <laughs> someone <laughs> yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just, just general kind of, like, you do, know. What, what, do you reckon you'd have passed the, uh, pretend- Well, that's what so I was wondering. So, you'd, wondering so myself, you'd have had to pretend to be- GAY. GAY to get yeah. in to see Spears. Now Can that- you say gay on that, the radio? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, I, I'm that's, that's irony, isn't it? So you're pretending to be gay to get into a club to mm. see a bird that yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah, I've got, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a little quick test. <laughs> right. Shall I? Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, uh, well, sorry, what's your name, mate? Um, Paolo. All right, Paolo. Yeah. Um, you, right, it, you haven't done a lot with your hair, you just sort of let it, sort of let it grow out. I mean, yeah. would you be putting product on a bit later? Because, I mean, you don't look very, I've been mean, sort of like, you don't, you look sort of quite... Quite masculine, quite. Yeah, well, sort of like, like you didn't care, like you have no care no, about no, no, how no. you look, like you're a. I no, mean, well, like... normally it would be shaved. Of course. Oh, okay. Yes. We would say normally that looks about like three months growth there. Why haven't you? I've been ill. <laughs> Nothing yeah. serious. Nothing serious. Okay. No, that's why I let it grow. So it's grown. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what? What time would you normally be going out then? Paolo? Normally I'd go out about sort of. Uh, I'd go out about eight-ish. I. Eight o'clock in the evening no, you go? No, 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 no. Because no, that sounds got... a bit early, that's what- No, no I'd go out about three in the morning normally. Right, so I was like, yeah, okay, we'll right, so that's three. right, that's right, yeah. Where'd you go, down sort of- Down Oh, Compton Street for a coffee and then yeah. onto <laughs> yeah. G-A-Y, like with that, your yeah. little shaved head. head. 
Um, okay, well, well you're, you're, you're doing, you're Sounding doing fine. Sounding pretty gay. Sounding pretty gay. Can I just ask you one final question? 20 I'm, bender points? Um, it's 20 bender points, so I'm just gonna let you in. Okay, I'm just fine. gonna tell the guys to let you in, but I'll ask you one more question. Yeah. Do you prefer knobs or tits, <laughs> oh. Paolo? Uh, well, uh, knobs. Knobs, you love no, knobs, do you? Oh, Can't no, get no, enough no. knobs. So, you, what, you hate tits, I assume? Load them. Load you them. hate tits, do you? Yes. Okay. What? Even Liza Minnelli's? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I. Yeah, I love hers. But not in a not in a straight not way. In a straight way. In a game so game. okay, okay. So you, you love you love knobs more than tits, I love knobs right? More than tits. Okay, I okay. Love knobs. In you go. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, you know, Britney's on, do you? Oh, she is so sexy. Oh. See, that's what would give me away. Like I know. The great escape. It's just just the last. Yeah. You just. Well, you, you're. I, I mean, I think you're probably a bit bi. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. but I mean, go in anyway. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay, the drinks are quite expensive. Oh, so. Pop your shirt off, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cash, Hurt, on XFM, 104.9. That's brilliant, isn't it? Good. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. So, what have we done? We've done gays, transvestites. Have we done knob use yet, or...? It's nice that you can talk about pre-op transsexuals nowadays on the radio. I know. You know, without the fear of complaints or... I know. Listeners. Listeners, <laughs> that's the thing. If we had any listeners, we'd get complaints, we really wouldn't would. we? We really We'd get some serious complaints if yeah. anyone cared enough. That's to why pick we haven't gone to a to a decent station with you know. A big we would audience. never do on a, on a real radio station. We could never do this. No. Could we? Why We'd not? Why not? See, I, I'm not doing this to like mess about and offend anyone. I think it's an interesting topic. What you talking gobbledygook? Not really knowing what. An yeah, earth Carl, what on Carl, for the first five minutes, you couldn't talk. What? <laughs> 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 okay. Li um, although, although, with, you know, the, the you know, who's the biggest, most professional person in radio? It's probably Terry Wogan, isn't mm. it? And it was it you that said you can't tell what the sentence he's saying because no. he keeps going up at the end before. But he and never. After. There's well, never well, any well, punctuation. Well, just, yeah. So yeah. he'll just segue from one point to the next, and he'll be like, "Going on my holidays Friday. We're having a lovely time," says <laughs> Mrs. Scarpy <laughs> Sheen of Westminster. I'm thinking of going to Greece. Uh, Oh, and it's halfway. So, uh, so he's got his knobs, but he's still got the tits. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah, typical, <laughs> typical. Oh, hello, Paolo. Do you want to come then. into my club yeah, to see? I'd love to go. Oh, Britney Spears, Britney Spears. Is a massive fan. Yeah, well, it doesn't start for a while. It's sure. uh, it's only about eight o'clock, and you know you're not going out for hours yet. I no, 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 eight no, or seven. No, no. But um, might as well watch a bit of telly. We've got uh, FA Cup final. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just uh, that's a good one, isn't it? Uh, or we've got um, the Eurovision Song Contest. What do you want to watch, Paolo? Oh, blimey, blimey! Well, I love all the um, the camp and lame right. of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. But I, oh, is that David Beckham playing? Because I love him. Oh, his I see hair what you've done. Legs. See what you've done. You see? So you will watch the football, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you'll be mainly looking at Just the looking at the, the the legs and the tight, yeah. the tight shorts. So while Beckham's knocking him in, <laughs> you'll be <laughs> exactly knocking <laughs> one um, right. Let's, uh... Do you know, I remember, I don't, I mean, I never really looked, but when you see old clips of, say, early 80s footballers, the shorts are much tighter, aren't they? I think, I mean, I don't know, I don't <laughs> I look. don't really know, I, I don't look. Do really you, looking. I remember oh. Carl was saying when he went and there was two strippers, a bloke <laughs> and a woman, and they whipped off their clothes at the same time, and you looked straight at the boys' Yeah, everybody pack. would. You would have done. Right. You do do. You do do? You look at his do do? <laughs> what do you mean? You look at his do do? No, what? I'm just saying, if you were there, you would have done the same. Two people on the stage. Yeah. Woman and a man. Yeah. They were getting the clothes off. Yeah. Right? The fella <laughs> took his pants off the same time as the girl took her knickers off. Yeah, right. right? All I'm saying is it's human nature to have a, have a quick look, have a quick glance, see what's going on. <laughs> see what's going on! And then I, wanted, I wanted to look at the woman, but she put her knickers back on quick. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't live opposite from you, did she? But just, sorry, just to return briefly to the shorts question. I, yeah. It's only because... In the 30s and 40s, they were huge shorts, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, genuinely massive, like... Yeah, uh, huge. A small child could well, wear them as trousers, they were... I think that's to do with comfort and decency, though, isn't it? And then, but by the sort of 80s, there was barely any shorts there. I think that was fashion. But it's weird that it's, uh, you feel like at some point someone's gone, guys, I mean, They've good game too today, small. but <laughs> this is ludicrous. But that's, but that's what happened, isn't it? Because, you know, it's, things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And fashion, it's like, like flares, yeah. drain pipes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. heels, flat. Yeah. Tall hats, flat <laughs> hats. Yeah. What do you make of the miniskirt? 
Uh, long hair, skinhead. <laughs> yeah. Miniskirt, uh, again, I don't know, they, I'm, I'm sure there's been ten resurgences of miniskirt yeah. since 65, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fashion, so the short, uh, you know what, do you know what I think, Steve? I think the shorts will get smaller again before we die. <laughs> I think we'll see one more tight little packet of Premiership footballers running round with their awful, squeezed, yeah. like, uh, like uh, the last chicken in a butcher's window. The almost protruding. Wrapped up, yeah. Yeah, well, Imagine if they just wore cling film shorts so you could see what was happening there, Carl. Where would you look then? Because you like football, don't you? We're doing rockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> oh,